NTNA Challenge 10 In The Mood, sponsored by Wildflowers. Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to be showing you the final NTNA challenge for the regular part of this competition and this is the challenge that determines the final three. So this is a huge challenge so definitely if you guys want to keep me in this competition a little bit longer vote for me on Monday. I'll put a link in the description box below. This challenge is sponsored by Wildflowers and they wanted us to create a design that was based on a mood or emotion only using textures and colors. So no objects or faces or anything of that nature. Just just textures and colors and to invoke an emotion. So if you guys can figure out what my emotion is throughout the video by seeing the different things that I paint and create, definitely put a guess in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what you guys all think. And once again, don't forget to vote and I'll see you next time. Bye. You can use the wildflowers nails in a box as a base. Shorten the almond shaped tips to match the length of your natural nail bed. Fit a form around a brush cover or similar shaped object that is as close to the same size as the nail tip so the C-curves match as much as possible. Use some poster putty to position the tip against the form. Here's how it should look. For my planned shape, I tip the form up to create a hidden apex where the tip meets the form. Use build in a bottle to create a base for the enhancement. To help convey my emotion, I'm going to create a Russian almond shape that is slightly softer with fewer angles. Before you remove the form, float gel over the hidden apex area. By the end of this stage, your nail should be flat. Here's how your nail should look at this point. Top of the nail comes to a slight taper, sidewalls are slightly dropped, overall the nail is paper thin, and this will allow for layers to be applied without the finished nail being thick and wide. As you can see, there's a beautiful deep C curve. Pour some glitters in the colors Icicle, Serenity, Dewdrop, Lake, and Rust in little bowls to make it easier to grab individual pieces of glitter. Carefully place the large hexagon shapes from the mixes on each nail. Align the edges of the glitters to create a honeycomb type pattern. Hold the nails in a row in the order they will be applied to your hand, then while you're creating the pattern, they will continue from one nail to the next. Seal the glitter and smooth the nail with a layer of build in a bottle. Blend some foggy blue gel polish up to the line of glitter. Blend it out so there is no harsh lines. Everything in this design should have a fluid appearance. Create a gradient with a diluted minty green. Use a soft brush when applying the diluted colors to avoid visible brush strokes. Encapsulate the gradient with more build in a bottle. Begin building the visible apex. At this point, you don't need to have the final shape sculpted yet, but the layers of clear gel add a depth to the nail that is simply stunning. Drop gel polish in pastel blue, green, purple, and white on a palette. Take a dotting tool and swirl the colors gently. Don't overdo the swirl. Remember, the colors will blend more once they are applied to the nail. Pick up some of the gel polish with a rounded brush. Try and get a mix of the colors in a single scoop. Apply a thin amount of bloom gel in the area you intend to add the swirl, then gently drag the swirl across the uncured bloom gel. If you need more color, pick up more gel polish and add it. Use Gold Artist Gel Paint to create a few precise lines through the swirl. Encapsulate the nail with one final layer of build in a bottle, then finish file the nail to perfect the shape. Apply top coat and after it's cured, rub angel flakes in the areas of the nail that don't have any detail yet. You can use a gloved finger, a silicone tool, or a clean eyeshadow applicator to apply the flakes. Then tap white gel polish that has been diluted with top coat over the flakes. As the gel sits, it will bead up on the flakes leaving a very organic result. Add a little bit of depth with white artist gel paint. For the small details, the magenta brush is perfect. The bristles are fine and precise, giving you control over where the product is placed. Use clear puffy gel to add a ripple texture over the nail with the exception of where the glitter vein is. The great thing with the puffy gel is there's no need to flash cure. The gel will not run together unless you connect the lines. These ripple lines should flow in the direction of the patterns underneath. This will exaggerate and enhance them instead of distract from them. With a spatula, press a small amount of white lace paste on a nail form backing. Shape the lace paste into hooks. These need to be very small so they will comfortably fit under the nails. You can also use a silicone tool to help shape the paste. Drop a bit of build in a bottle under the nail where you want the hook. Hold the hook in place with the tweezers and use a flash cure light to hold it in place. The lace paste will be brittle, so to avoid breakage, apply more build in a bottle over it to reinforce it. Scoop some salt into a small square of cling wrap. Gather the ends of the cling wrap and give it a twist and you will have a form for creating your orbs. 
The good thing with using salt inside the wrap is that it will move around so you don't have a perfectly round shape but something more organic. When you're happy with the salt packet, hold the end of the wrap with a pinching tool. Swirl purple artist gel paint into clear builder gel. Again, don't over swirl the colors as they will mix more as you are working with them. Dip the salt packet into the builder gel. If your shape isn't perfect, you can adjust it with a brush before curing. You can adjust the size of the orbs by using more or less salt inside the packet. After it's finished curing, open the cling wrap and dump out the salt, then carefully pull out the wrap. Here's a finished orb. I love how natural it looks. Attach a few orbs to the nails using your build in a bottle and set them in place with a flash cure light. To make the floating orbs, start by tying a loop in the end of fishing line. The fishing line is clear, which will not be very noticeable in the final design. String a little glass bead over the fishing line and glue a ball magnet to the bead. Secure the magnet in place with more build in a bottle. Make sure your magnet is secure so it won't pop off when you put a strong magnet near it. Finish the floating elements with three orbs. The orbs are lightweight and won't hinder the magnet's movement. So as you can see, you put a strong magnet near them and they slightly move. The loops in the end of the fishing line are attached to the hooks underneath the nails. This makes it an optional element so you can decide if you want to have the floating orbs on there or not. I love how the orbs just very gently move back and forth when the magnet is near them. Their movement isn't sporadic or too crazy, it's just very gentle. And here's what the nails look like without the orbs attached. They're very elegant and very sleek. The colors are all pastel and smooth. The texture themselves, if you just run your finger across them, is so lovely. I just love the way it feels. If you could take a moment and vote for me on Monday, I will put a link in the description box below. Bye!